Many dreams die while suffering. When you're suffering, you give up on the very things that you wanted the most. So many people out there fail, not because they don't have the ability, it's because they don't have the heart to go through adversity. Now it's the mental game. And that's where people get lost in life, get lost in that next level. So, you know, if you take people, and I've told you this, and you expose them voluntarily to things that they are avoiding and are afraid of, you know, that they know they need to overcome in order to meet their goals, their self-defined goals. If you can teach people to stand up in the face of the things they're afraid of, they get stronger. And you don't know what the upper limits to that are, because you might ask yourself, like, if for 10 years, if you didn't avoid doing what you knew you needed to do, by, the def by your own definitions, right, within the value structure that you've created to the degree that you've done that, what would you be like? Well, you know, there are remarkable people who come into the world from time to time, and there are people who do find out over decades long periods what they could be like if they were who they were, if they said, if they spoke their being forward. And they get stronger and stronger and stronger, and we don't know the limits to that. We do not know the limits to that. And so you could say, well, in part, perhaps the reason that you're suffering unbearably can be left at your feet, because you're not everything you could be, and you know it. Now, whatever goal you have, you're going to have some opposition. You're going to have some difficulties. You're going to have some challenges. You're going to have your inner conversation telling you you can't do it, and you're going to have people thinking at you. you got to talk to yourself when you begin to think negative. I don't think I can do that, Les. You can. Why don't you just test yourself? Why don't you stretch, Les? Come on, man. When you start seeing yourself thinking something negative, stop it right quick. Stop yourself. Catch yourselves. When you find yourself getting negative with people that you have allowed to push your butts, when you find yourself becoming negative about what's happening to you, you've got to affirm to yourself in the process, hey, no, 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 I can make it. There's some way this can happen for me. As you start believing that you are worthy of good things supposed to happen to you, you develop a sense of entitlement. Good things supposed to happen to me. Working on yourself, watching that inner dialogue, it will determine the quality of your life. You chase something that you believe you deserve until you get it. And it doesn't matter what happens to you. It doesn't matter how many times you get fired. It doesn't matter how many people don't believe in you. Just go until you get it. Because if you're willing to go through all the battling you got to go through to get to where you want to get, who's got the right to stop you? Nobody. It's your right to listen to your gut. It ain't nobody's right to say no. At the earn rate to be where you want to be and do what you want to do. If you do what is easy, your life will be hard. But if you do what is hard, keep coming back again and again and again. Get up dressed every day, knowing some way, somehow, with a spirit of expectation, I can do this. If you do that over and over and over again, your life will be easy. I think that there is a biological imperative hardwired into the brain that you must do hard things in order to feel good about yourself. And when I think about it from an evolutionary standpoint, and this is why I think rich kids implode, they just never had to do hard things. From an evolutionary perspective, I think it was just so hard to stay alive, like for millions of years, it really was red in tooth and claw. Like to stay alive, you were kill or be killed, you were hunting, gathering, fighting other tribes, I mean, just crazy. And the people that were going to survive were going to be the ones that, that got an emotional, a self-applied uh, emotional reward for doing something hard. And when you do something hard and you recognize it, it needs to feel good. And if it does, then you will keep doing hard things and you're the far more likely to survive than the person who's like, that sucked, there was no redeeming qualities. And so it's just like, when I think about that, because if I were to create a recipe for fulfillment, it's very simple. It's working really hard, doing hard things, to gain a set of skills that allow you to serve not only yourself, but others. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's the whole Pretty recipe. Agree. But it, it really has to be that you had to do something hard. If it came easily to you, it won't give you the sense of respect that you want. Like the stuff that I've gotten more easily in my life, I don't take a lot of pride in. It's always the stuff that I grind out like through pain and suffering and I endure. In fact, I want to read you yeah. a quote. This is one of my all-time favorite Go quotes. So here it is. To those human beings who are of any concern to me, I wish suffering, desolation, sickness, ill treatment, indignities, 
I wish that they should not remain unfamiliar with profound self-contempt, the torture of self-mistrust, the wretchedness of the vanquished. I have no pity for them because I wish them the only thing that can prove today whether one is worth anything or not, that one endures. We are all chained to fortune. The chain of one is made of gold and wide, while that of another is short and rusty. But what difference does it make? The same prison surrounds all of us, and even those who have bound others are bound themselves. Unless perchance you think that a chain on the left side is lighter, honors bind one man, wealth another. Nobility oppresses some, humility others. Some are held in subjection by an external power, while others obey the tyrant within. Banishments keep some in one place, the priesthood others. All life is slavery. Therefore, each one must accustom himself to his own condition and complain about it as little as possible and lay hold of whatever good is to be found near him. Nothing is so bitter that a calm mind cannot find comfort in it. Small tablets, because of the writer's skill, have often served for many purposes and a clever arrangement has often made a very narrow piece of land habitable. Apply reason to difficulties. Harsh circumstances can be softened, narrow limits can be widened, and burdensome things can be made to press less severely on those who bear them cleverly. We are emotional creatures. We all study, like you're talking about it, using your brain, you're such a smart person, I love you dearly, and you analyze it all. But your effing brain isn't gonna do shit. What's gonna do it is enough emotion. Well, emotion is the power. Emotion is what starts wars, it's what ends wars. Emotion is what gets you married, emotion is where kids come from, divorce is where emotion comes from. Everything that you can think of of a major change in humanity, from the most extreme of war to the most gentle of love, all come from human emotion. So it's the mix of emotion. It's like knowing what you want and having the right fuel to get there. And you have, if the fuel has no combustion, you're just bored, you're not going anywhere. If the fuel is total trauma and I'm overwhelmed, you just blow up and go nowhere. There's that delicate balance. And I've learned over the years how to help people find that balance. I would ask you to consider something. Please. What you just said is absolutely true. I know you really well and you know how much I respect and love you personally. And what you've accomplished in your life is extraordinary. What you're continuing to accomplish is extraordinary. But there's an emotional inflection that made you use those things in those moments. It wasn't just those understandings. It, the emotion made you find the answers, brother. And then you have a really smart mind. You found the answers, figure out how to use it. But there were inflection moments that made you do it. There's a reason why you left your company after building it to a billion dollars. It wasn't intellectual. It's emotions. So, but you have developed your mind so much, it's like your right arm, your bicep is really strong. Your left one, not quite as much. And I'm inviting you to consider that your left one is your more powerful one. And you've used it in key moments, but it also, it's very protected to use the mind because we're all afraid to feel a little too much. So the more I can understand it, I put it out here, I can analyze it, I don't have to be in it. But the truth is where the real impact is, is when there's enough emotion that gets you to apply the things that you understand intellectually, right? Or find the yeah. answer that you, you didn't even have the answers. You found the answers intellectually because the emotion drove you. So it's really studying what creates that emotion that makes the difference in anybody's life. That's where everything begins and ends is with emotion. And yet our society is all about up here. You know, in Chinese medicine, it's all about the heart, right? That's considered the center. Right? In America, we think it's the brain. Now, you, you know, when you first are born, you know, your heart starts beating. That's how we know you're alive. And there is no brain yet. And this literally is the initial sense of intelligence. That's why, you know, for thousands of years, even poets have talked about the power of the heart. Well, the heart has tremendous power and there's a biochemical connection between the brain and the heart that I know you know about. And learning how to use that is where you create more lasting change. When I was understanding it all, I was good. When I learned how to move people, I got great at what I was doing.